Hey, how's it going? This week we're going to be doing Execute. When people bring up bad Pokemon designs, a Pokemon like Execute is usually brought up, especially for those in defense of the newer generations so looking to put down Generation 1 to prop up their preferred generations. Personally, I don't have a problem with it. I like the design. It's a half dozen eggs and they are mad at something. And maybe you'll come to understand why and what they are mad at by the end of this video. I've always specifically wondered about this one. It's just like a, it's just cracked open. You can see on the inside. Is it okay? Is it dying? Is it already dead? And those are questions we may never know the answer to. So going into this video, I'm just going to shoot straight with you guys. This run is very exhausting. Do you get it? <laughs> I mixed egg with exhausting to make light of the torment that I endured during this run. And I can't sugarcoat it. And I'm not going to go over a stat or move deep dive like I generally do. Because I do cover it in the video itself. And as you can see from the video link, this one is close to the length of last week's video that encompassed two whole Pokemon runs. So does that mean that Execute's final in-game time is longer than those two combined? Well I guess you're just going to have to figure that one out. Before we hop in, I do runs like this fairly often, and if that is of interest to you, feel free to subscribe and catch my latest videos. Likes, dislikes, and comments are the things that help out these small channels break through the algorithm the most, so if you're someone who just usually doesn't interact or comment, just go ahead, scroll down, and type excruciating in the comment selection below to grant me the strength as we get to some of the worst pre-evolved Pokemon coming up. So sit back, grab you a Sodi Pop, maybe grab you some eggnog, and strap in because this one's a real holiday treat. As usual, I reset for decent DVs, but honestly I'm not sure there's much of a difference in Execute if it has 0 in its stats or 15 in its DVs. I know I've given a lot of flack to Growlithe, but we'll soon uncover why I would probably prefer to do 5 more Growlithe runs compared to this annoying little bundle of eggs. The seams start to unravel a little bit on the very first bug catcher. Now being weak to poison isn't great, but that's not really the issue here. You see the strategy I'm implementing here? I'm using the 60% accurate hypnosis, then trying to chip it down slowly with barrage. Now on the second bug catcher, you start to get an idea of some of the foreshadowing problems that lie ahead. I just healed so I'm at full PP. I slogged through this fight and not only did it take a ton of time, but the highlight here is that just a single trainer battle that has three weak Pokemon takes me down to only three attacking power points of barrage left. This means I have to do the last bug catcher that only has a single Weedle by using Struggle, and it dawned on me that I've never really used or really looked into Barrage. Now I'm not spewing hyperbole here, or I'm not trying to make something seem awful just to make it more entertaining when I say this, but Barrage just might be the worst damaging move in the entire game. The only thing that compete with it are clones of it, kind of like Fury Attack. Let's just take a look at the bad moves like Pound, Tackle, or Scratch. These are 40 base power moves with 100% accuracy. They aren't great, but they're starter moves and they do their job decent enough. Now Barrage is a 15 power base move that hits anywhere from 2 to 5 times. This means that it has to hit 3 times just to be 5 base power ahead of Tackle. And trust me, most of the time this move is only going to hit 2 times. If you want the numbers, there is a 37.5% chance for it to hit twice and it has an equal chance of hitting 3 times. Then after that there's a subsequent chance of 12.5% of it hitting 4 and then the same chance of it hitting 5 but that's not really reliable. Now if we look at the accuracy that's where it gets even worse. It's an 85% accuracy move but trust me when I say it feels like this move has a 60% accurate chance to hit. I feel like there's times in the run, I don't know if I'll show them, but there's times where it misses like four or five times in a row and it's extremely frustrating. So a quick little recap, you have an 85% accurate move that's 30 base power 37.5% of the time, meaning that you have to use it so many times that you can often only do two battles, maybe three if you're pushing the limits of execute before having to go back and heal your PP at a focus center. Now if you've glanced over at the move pool, you'll see that there's no hope in terms of moves until halfway through the game, so this is how things are going to go. I have to put them to sleep, I have to hope that barrage is good enough for me to get by for a couple of battles, that I have to go heal. Oh yeah, did I mention that executes also in the slow leveling group? That means that it's not really feasible to level up past your problems because it's so tedious and that brings us to our current thing that's going to absolutely wall us off and that's Brock. 
what level can I get past Brock with all these awful things in mind? And I don't want you guys to think that I'm spending too much time just bitching about Barrage, but it's going to be a core part of what makes this execute run what it is. And if this level 11 attempt at Brock is anything to go by, we are really far off. At this point, I can't even get past the Geodude, and it's not even close. At this point, I will spare you from the uneventful and painful barrage based grinding. And let's take a look at when I'm at my limit determined to do this fight, and that's level 16. I finally attempt this fight, and it takes me about 10 tries to finally break through. And as much as I know you would love watching each of these 5 plus minute long attempts that last 65 plus turns each. Each. Just look at this one attempt where it looks kind of promising, but struggle strats mean that I faint right when the Onyx is at the end of its life. At this point, I almost turned the game off right here, guys. I was not having fun at this point. I was having barrage-induced mental issues. Now let's talk about this one successful attempt I had. And unfortunately, I can't talk that long about Geodude as there's not really much to say, but the footage is over two minutes in itself, so it was just a gigantic slog. The best you can really hope for, and what I finally got was an attempt where I don't take a lot of chip damage and the strategy here is to save your hypnosis PP for Onyx since Brock has 38 full heals anyway and you have to use Barrage and hope that it doesn't take a huge majority of its 20 PP just to get past the Geodude. And now for the Onyx and what makes for one of the most tedious battles I've ever had in my Pokemon playing career. You essentially keep tossing out hypnosis and remember that he has 5 full heals so you have to land 6 of these just to get the nappy to stick and from there you have to hope that you have some good damage and stay healthy enough before you run out of power points and have to use struggle. This one took a long time and a lot of attempts. I was on struggle strategies at about half of the Onyx's health, but thankfully I was able to make it through. I would say this battle came really close to rivaling Eevee's bide strategies on Ghastly, and that's saying a lot. But what about the time? How bad was it since I talked it up so much? Well, we're sitting at 1 hour and 56 minutes. It's not my worst time, but it's pretty close to it. And you might be thinking that Psyduck had a worse time, but he was able to pull it through to be an actual respectable run. But let's shine a light on some of the more immediate problems that I touched on a little bit earlier. This right here is the third mandatory bug catcher after Brock on my way to Mount Moon. I wouldn't say it's particularly tough, but fighting three trainers is stretching execute to its absolute limit. Limits. Fairly early in the fight, I ran out of Barrage PP, and I'm forced to waste 17 power points of Hypnosis until I get to struggle so I can make it to this fight, and then I walk all the way back to Pewter, and then I heal, and then I'm just hoping that maybe we can make it through Mount Moon. So this right here puts me in a conundrum. I'm in the slow leveling group, and for rival number 2, you generally need to be about level 18 or higher if you aren't a great Pokemon. And needless to say, we are not a great Pokemon. This means I need to fight extra trainers. This means that I have to heal, then I go back, battle two trainers, I heal again, I come back, and you are seeing how this isn't great and how this cycle is going to keep racking up the time. Inside of Mount Moon, I'm really trying my best to balance levels and the fickle nature of Barrage's pathetic damage, but I run completely out of PP on this rocket grunt right before the super nerd guarding the fossils. And this brings me back to a problem I had in the Giratina video, and that's the fact that I'm on struggle strats and he has three Pokemon. I wanted so badly just to somehow be able to get past this fight because I really wanted this run to be as good as it could be. I feel like I must have tried this fight 15, 20, 25 times just hoping that I would get the luck and RNG needed but the recoil damage and him having three Pokemon was pretty much an insurmountable roadblock. I seriously spent about half an hour trying to get past this, just trying to get it to work. Eventually, I concede to the reality that I need to go back to a Poke Center, and in an attempt to save some time, I use the one and only escape rope that I usually save to get back from Bill's house to Cerulean, and I'm not even going to give the super nerd the satisfaction of showing this successful attempt. We're done with him. From there, I pick up in Cerulean, and I really wish I could say it starts to pick up some steam here. I really do. But now let's look at rival number two. Remember earlier when I said that Barrage had 85% accuracy and it felt more more like 60% and the fact that we have to utilize hypnosis with its actual 60% accuracy was pretty annoying? Well take that and add even a single sand attack to it and you come away with some really rage inducing suck the life out of you style of battles. This fight wasn't great and this is our second brush with sand attack after the optional rival fight earlier but I'll highlight the problems that it causes here. Because even if you can manage to weave your way through the fight, get some lucky dice rolls and make your way to the end, the Charmander is just way 
plating there, and it's going to use Ember since the rival has good AI and it'll always go for super effective moves most of the time. This is also as good of a time as any to bring up something that's another generation 1 quirk and something I find funny. And I bring up good AI with Charmander and you might be thinking, well Matt, if Charmander always goes for Ember, why doesn't the Pidgeotto just go for Gust rather than Sand Attack? And that's a great question, but didn't you guys know that obviously Gust is a normal type move in generation 1 because of course it is and it's not a flying move until generation 2? The more you know. Anyways, the fight isn't impossible and I actually get past it on my third attempt despite taking an early sand attack and I know the footage has been sped up but just see if you can tell how little Barrage actually does on any competent Pokemon. Luckily the Charmander does try to hit a Leer one time, I get lucky with some hypnosis and the sleep sticks enough for me to slowly chip away with what little dignity I have left to get past this fight. And from there I would say the route to Bill's house is uneventful like I always do but I'd like to quickly touch on how often Execute runs out of PP real quick once again, and it's a reoccurring theme here. This is the second trainer of the five on Nugget Bridge, and when I'm done with it, I'm battered, I'm bloodied, I'm poisoned, I'm down to just seven PP of Barrage, and I have to retreat to heal up after the second trainer. I can't stress enough how I'm not exaggerating when I say you can only do two trainers, and then you have to get your power points back at the Poke Center, because if you try a third trainer, you're going to be really pushing your luck, because then you're just gonna have to use all 30 turns on hypnosis and then you struggle to hope you can get past it. It's not great. And I'm playing a new trainer in the background. I'm playing a very special trainer. It's the nondescript hiker that has a single onyx that I don't know if I've ever mentioned or showed before but I'd like to specifically show this battle and bring home some of Execute's biggest problems. This is an over four minute fight and he has just a single Pokemon. I run out of barrages and it's not like I went into the fight low on barrage PP so after depleting 100 turns worth of hypnosis and all my barrages and then using struggle for what felt like three hours I get the privilege of going back healing facing a couple more trainers going back healing, fighting some more, and you guys are getting the point. I feel like I'm being extremely negative, but I think it's pivotal in these videos to let you guys know the exact experience and struggles without sugarcoating it. And if Execute's early game has it made me want to drive off a cliff enough, I had to use my escape rope earlier, and I have to manually walk from Bill's house back to Cerulean. I know I sometimes joke about hitting rock bottom, but this is truly the lowest point in my Pokemon training career, at least for now. And that finally brings us to Misty and what a journey so far right guys you would think that this would be an easy break since her Pokemon will only use tackle but Barrage is so weak that I actually fail the first attempt it's kind of close but some crits by Starmie do take me out I do actually take the battle on the next attempt and it's the same strategy we'll be utilizing for the foreseeable future hypnosis to lessen the damage we take and slowly barraging down it is very concerning how close this fight actually is though it should be an easy win with our type advantage and the fact that we can put the Pokemon Pokemon to sleep, but it ends up not being that easy, and that, my friends, is a testament to how terrible Barrage actually is as a move. And as I make my way down to Vermilion, you might think to yourself, surely the run starts to pick up now. And to that, I say, have you learned nothing? Have you not listened to me at all? Because here we run into some more problems, and it adds in some new wrinkles that I've never had to deal with on a run before. There's the two uh, ace trainers. I don't even know what the fuck they are. It doesn't matter. The point is they got a lot of Pokemon and it depletes your PP. So usually in these runs, I don't talk about this a whole lot. Maybe I did early. But generally the strategy to save time is the fact that you want to make it down to Vermilion. You want to do all of the stuff you got to do. Battle rival number three. Battle Lieutenant Surge, and you want to use Dig inside of the Pokemon fan club after you get the bike voucher so that you can just go straight back to Cerulean. You save a lot of time, and that's how you get good times on some of these runs. It's just little tricks that I don't talk about much. But the fact that these two trainers guard in this, and then any trainer, like I said, two trainers, guys, is all you can do, means that I have to use the Poke Center in Vermilion, which compounds on itself, and I have to waste even more time. I honestly really hope you guys are enjoying my suffering. Now it's time for the SSN, and unfortunately Execute cannot learn Body Slam because, well, why would it get anything that can help ease the hell that I'm currently in? I do go for the optional rare candy, but in a run like this, even the gentleman guarding it gives me problems with his two fire type Pokemon. It takes me out a time or two before I'm able to even get past this. Execute is having problems I've never even had on runs before, and I can't tell if this is funny or sad at this point. But that brings us to rival number three, and there's a new problem that's arose from leveling up. If you can 
believe it. At level 25, I learned Reflect, and I like Reflect as a move. Taking half physical damage is good, but we still have the problem of only having Barrage. This means that if I get low or want to push the limits, depleting my PP to do struggle strats just isn't feasible anymore without going through an extra 20 of power points of Reflect. With that said, rival number two wasn't easy, and I'm not going to keep showing failure after failure after failure, but just know that a lot of the reasons for the early attempts was that the gentleman fight right before this, the one single fight took me down to 11 barrage pp and in no world was i ever going to be able to get through a battle with four pokemon i have to go heal i come back with full power points and it's still not easy it takes me another four failures to finally get the successful try and here's how it goes Putting the Pidgeotto to sleep and getting out of here with minimal damage is pivotal in the spot and since I have access to Reflect, you may as well set it up first since it's going to last off fight. I'm able to have things go my way and barrage down the bird with minimal trouble and that's really what you need in this fight. Reflect helps on the Raticate, but I still put it to sleep just to be sure and I resist Kadabra's moves but sleep is still preferred over them getting a lucky crit or something like that but overall these two Pokemon are not a problem. Charmeleon will be doing super effective damage and this is what it always comes down to. You can take several embers if you have a good start and all you need to have happen is a hypnosis to connect, stick with the sleep a couple of turns and then you can use the almighty barrage to slowly chip away at it. This fight wasn't great but honestly what has been great to this point I'm thankful to get past this fight. After seeing the SSN off it's time for Lieutenant Surge in the third badge. I resist electrical moves and I'm just hoping that this one is a brief repose from the hell that we've been experiencing thus far. And of course it's not the case. I do fail two times in this fight because although I resist thunderbolts and thundershocks I'm just a bundle of eggs and it still hurts me a lot. Couple that with just generally being unlucky with hypnosis missing key attacks and that's the reason for these failures. The third attempt is the charm and the first two Pokemon go down easy enough they were never an issue it was always going to be the right shoe anyway and this time I'm able to get it to go to sleep and I do the only thing that the egg knows how to do and that's throw that barrage at the opponent I do get worryingly low and was pretty much one bad luck miss away from losing again but let's just take the victory I'm not going to dwell on it we're not going to say what ifs now there's one more obstacle between this run and being somewhat reasonable after that but let's not get ahead of ourselves it's time for rock tunnel it's another segment of the game that I almost always skip over, but is it really a surprise to anybody that execute ran into some struggles and we're gonna have to show some? No. Well, let's enter the very first Pokemaniac inside. I just healed at the Poke Center, so I'm fresh, I'm clean, I'm ready to go, full PP. But the problem here is that both of his Pokemon have Growl, and even taking a single Growl is a death sentence for a Barrage-only Pokemon. It reduces your damage to, to less than pathetic somehow, and I have no choice but to reset this fight a couple of times because you guys have seen how pathetic Barrage is anyway. Imagine that halved twice, a quarter of the damage of Barrage. It's not great. Even on this attempt while I avoid Growl, it's still a slog and you waste so much barrages on this single fight that you have to go immediately heal right after and this is another first for me struggling on this one. The next annoying fight is the junior trainer with the Oddish and the Bulbasaur. You have to be at near full PP for this fight and you have to avoid poison powder but the Bulbasaur also has growl which means that you could easily waste all of your barrages and still not get this fight down. At level 28, Execute learns Leech Seed, and while it seems like it would be cool to have some tiny extra chip damage and some healing, it's really not great, especially in this fight because it provides nothing here as grass types are immune to it. I have to reset on this fight a couple of times as well. The rest of Rock Tunnel isn't as terrible, but I figured I'd show the Double Geodude and Graveler Hiker since we are here, and all I can say is thank god for Reflect. Barrage's damage is resisted, so it's doing next to nothing, so my strategy in this fight is to pop a Reflect, use leech seed and just piss around until they use self-destruct and with reflect I take minimal damage and I'm able to just tank the damage and get past this fight. It was an interesting way to get through this fight and honestly one of the few times Execute has encountered a problem that it was able to tackle on the very first attempt. So are things actually about to start looking up? Are brighter days actually ahead? Well yes my friends, rejoice in the fact that Execute is about to get at least 300% better if not more. 
In Celadon, I immediately grab fresh water, and I make the fastest trip to Saffron that I've ever made in my entire life to get Psychic, with Execute also being Psychic Typing. The stab bonus is a much needed power boost to what has been a pretty pathetic run up to this point. The problem now is that it only has 10 uses, but luckily we can remedy that since two of the game's three PP ups are found in Celadon, and that gets us up to 14 uses. And I don't need to really tell you how much better this makes Execute, but I'll briefly do so. It's a 90 base power move with the same type attack bonus, and that means it goes up to 135 base power. That means on average, it's stronger than 3 to 5 barrages depending on how lucky you get. Now take into account that it also has 100% accuracy compared to barrages 85% accuracy, and then take that even further to the fact that Psychic has a 33.2% chance to lower the opponent's special, which makes subsequent Psychics even stronger, and needless to say, it took us four hours to get to this point, but it's a much needed boost and it'll allow me to not have this video be about 50 minutes long. So that leads us to Giovanni number one, and I would say that you get to see Psychic's power immediately, but I'm kind of stupid sometimes, and I put the Onyx to sleep, I leech seed it, and I use Barrage for some bizarre reason. I don't know what past Matt was thinking here, but after that I do use Psychic and quickly get past the Rhydon and the Kangaskhan, and it feels really good to have a little power because Execute has an actual respectable special stat, so it's pretty strong. From here I want some more experience, and I got a decent amount of power points to burn, so I head to Erica's gym, and I fight her underling trainers. I had been avoiding a lot of grinding up to this point just due to how slow and awful it was, but I want to take a little bit of time to sure up my levels now that we have a little bit of power and it's not a complete slog. I hold off on Erica, and from there it's time for Pokemon Tower and rival number 4. And just like you might expect, this one is a psychic showdown. The only hold up in this fight is the execute mirror match, and it's a little annoying, but since it doesn't have psychic, it's a little more than a minor annoyance at best. The rest of the Pokemon go down to one or two psychics, and I outlevel, so I outspeed, and this one is the second easy major fight of the game, and things might just be turning around. Now it's time to hit up Erica's cell and get in a quick little battle. This one isn't bad. Psychic is powerful enough to give me more than enough firepower, but the victory bell is still annoying. I get poison, and I get rat for several turns, and I thought this one might go south really quick, but eventually I do blast through it, and the last two Pokemon aren't really worth commenting on. Now this is three one-shot victories over some key battles if you're keeping track at home. Down in Fuchsia, the jugglers are a menace and tough to get past. I'm not going to go in depth or give them a lot of screen time, but their special bulk resisting psychic puts us into a position where we are doing pre-psychic levels of damage with barrage, and it's not great. Now it's Koga's turn, and perhaps one of the most favorable matchups we've had in the run to this point. I do waste turns thinking that I'll need to put the Pokemon to sleep first, but I don't think that was actually needed. Psychic does great, as you would expect, since it's super effective, and I weave my way through the first three Pokemon with relative ease. The Weezing does do some heavy damage and probably would have taken me out if it wasn't for Hypnosis, and Psychic eventually cleans this one up. Execute is actually doing it, guys. This run might be salvageable if it wasn't already well past the 5 hour mark with a lot left to go. I run up to the Safari Zone, and I encounter a rare Kangaskhan, and I just throw a ball to see if today is my lucky day and everything's turning around. It's not. It runs away, and I never hear from it ever again. Before I pick up the last HMs, I decide that if Execute isn't going to have the best run, it's at least going to be unique. Now here's a move that you'll never ever see again on this channel, so enjoy it. It's TM37, Egg Bomb. It's not great. It's got a respectable 100 base power. It's a normal move, but it has a lackluster 75% accuracy, but it's one of the better physical coverage moves that Execute gets, and that's a bad thing, not a compliment. I'm not being positive. Now it's time for Silphco, and I'm not feeling confident about the impending rival number 5 fight, so I go on a battling binge of basically all the trainers inside of the building from floor 2 all the way up to floor number 11. This is a valuable source of experience, and that leads us to the rival number 5 fight at a decent level of 45. The first battle doesn't go great, I get chipped down, I miss some key moves, I eventually get poisoned, and I don't even get to see the Charizard before I get taken out. I'm fully prepared for this one to take a while, so I buckle down, I zone in. And the second attempt turns out to be great. I opt not to use Hypnosis, and I go straight Psychics to get me past the Pidgeot with relative ease. Next up is Execute, and to avoid being chipped down or potentially poisoned, I do put it to sleep and a few psychics get me through without taking unnecessary damage. Gyarados comes in, 
and I get lucky in the fact that I only take a bite, then it goes for a leer, I take it out, and I'm able to press on to the Alakazam. I take a lot of extra chip damage here, and I'm able to eventually get past with an egg bomb, so enjoy seeing this move while you can. I'm pretty low, I'm to the point I'm thinking I don't stand a chance when the Charizard finally comes in because Flamethrower is just going to destroy me, but I hit some luck here. I both outspeed it and I get the turn 1 Hypnosis to connect, and from there, it just never wakes up. And that's kind of sad now that I'm reading this back, but I'm just trying to say that I make it past this battle in two attempts, and that far exceeded my expectations for our little eggy boy. Next up is Giovanni 2, and this fight isn't difficult. It's worth noting that I learned Solar Beam via level up, and that's a two turn, 120 base power move, or 180 base power if you're accounting for stab. It's pretty strong in certain situations, and it gives Execute two special nukes on top of Egg Bomb. This fight is a combination of Psychic with a sprinkle of the previously mentioned Solar Beam, and it's another easy victory not worth commentating over every part of. Sabrina is up next, and this is another fight that's not bad at all. Egg Bomb is enough to nuke down the Kadabra and Mr. Mime, and then the oddly placed Venomoth is weak to Psychic. Now that takes us to the Alakazam, and we've been through this one before. I'm a Psychic type, it's just going to spam recover almost every turn, and I'm going back and forth and back and forth over and over before I realize, hey, I can just put this thing to sleep and not have to do this, and that's exactly what I do. I also learned Sleep Powder in this fight, and it's a strict upgrade over Hypnosis since it sports a 75% accuracy as opposed to the 60%, and that's just going to make things easier moving forward. Now that leads us to a very serene and pleasant brisk swim down to Cinnabar, and this week, we return for a little bit of Doomstoner, brother. And it's worth noting that I do battle extra trainers, although I'm weak to them, and it's not really that smooth as it is in other runs. Now it's time for Blaine, and let's see how this one goes. It's Grass Top versus Fire. It starts off alright, but it quickly starts to go south in the same exact part on my two failures. Fire Spin is just like Rap, meaning I won't get a turn ever. It's super effective, it does a lot of damage, and the Rapidash outspeeds me, meaning that if it wants to keep doing this until I die, it will, and it does. And that's how the first two attempts go, but Blaine has notoriously bad AI, and I know eventually if I'm patient, I will get my chance. And that's exactly what happens on the third attempt. I get past the easy pre-evolved Pokemon, and then I get the turn 1 Super Potion at full health patented move from Blaine, and that allows me to get the opening to put it to sleep, and then I psychic it down. The Arcanine gets the same treatment as well, and it's the same result. Fire Blast would have undoubtedly sent me to the Shadow Realm, but we'll never have to know because it's done, and I'm never doing this again. There's one gym left, and I don't do extra battles here, which was probably a mistake in hindsight. This battle overall is a breeze. I make use of my two special nukes and just easily navigate through this fight and I make it through for another easy victory. Next up is rival number six and I'm gonna show you my first attempt. It's not awful and it goes all right, but the Alakazam chips me down and then the Charizard outspeeds me and hits me with flamethrower. I do attempt this fight four to five times and the results are always the same. Charizard kills me. To remedy this, I go and I pick up Mimic and since I know that I'll level up in this fight from previous attempts, I head to the mansion in Cinnabar to finish off that one level. After that, I teach Mimic over Egg Bomb, and that's the last time we'll ever see or mention Egg Bomb on this channel. So now we have a new strategy, let's see how we implement it. On the Pidgeot, we have to put it to sleep, then Mimic Agility, then take it out, and it's not too much of a hassle because now our speed is through the roof, meaning that we'll outspeed everything on top of having a special bump from the badge boost. The plan all comes together as I weave my way through the fight utilizing sleep along with the correct move choices but I do take a decent amount of damage before getting to the Charizard. But with this strategy, I do outspeed it and all it takes to get past this one is hitting that 75% chance to put it to sleep and psychics just seal the deal. Overall it really wasn't awful with Mimic, but before the Mimic strategy I would say that this fight was in the impossible tier before I could outspeed the Charizard and Alakazam. From there I make it all the way to Victory Road and then I realize that I never turned in the teeth to the Warden for strength, so I have to backtrack all the way to Fuchsia to get the rare candy there as well. And overall Victory Road is quiet. I don't do many extra battles because honestly Execute isn't great and it just doesn't have a quick time which is potentially worrying for the upcoming Elite Four but here we are. After that I fly back to Celadon and I buy whatever vitamins I can and I use them to sure up my stats to see if we can cap off this great run. And that brings us to the first Lorelei attempt. 
Like always, I'm doing this without candies at first just to see how good or bad it is. It starts off by putting the dugong to sleep, and a solar beam can take it out in one hit. So far, so good. Cloyster is next, and I do take some heavy, super effective damage from an aurora beam, but a solar beam takes it out just like with the dugong. So bro is third, and this is where Mimic comes into play. I take Amnesia, I boost my special stats to Super Saiyan levels, and I just hope for the best. After we get through him, Jinx is next, and two psychics are still needed, and Lapras is last. I'm really low, but honestly I think I could have done this on the very first attempt, but I get frozen at 2 HP and I could have knocked it out, but honestly this is a great first attempt. I fully expected the ice damage to destroy us and have to level up with rare candies, but we already have something to build on and that's a positive. The second attempt goes nearly identical, so there's no point in showing the first Pokemon, but look how I tank a blizzard from Lapras like an absolute champ after missing sleep powder. I connect with it on the next turn, and Psychic is actually a one shot so I didn't even need to put it to sleep. That's Lorelei down at level 53, and there's not going to be any need to show her anymore. And you might be thinking, what about Bruno? Is this the room where he steps up and causes me lots of problems? No, it's not. I'm a Psychic type. We have access to Psychic, and he has two Onyxes on his team that are double weak to Solar Beam, and that's really enough said. Even in a run where I struggled for 70% of it and progressed through the game in an absolute crawl for the majority of it, Bruno is still one of, if not the easiest trainer I fought in the entire run. Some things never change, you no shirt wearing Neanderthal. Now that we know those two battles will be easy, I go ahead and I use some rare candies going into Agatha and that gets me up to level 64 and I go ahead and I give it a go. And we all know how Agatha is to face when you have access to Psychic or Earthquake and we have a Stab Psychic. Initially I do get put to sleep, I take some damage, but overall it's not even close as the damage output of my super effective moves are too much to overcome. The only real interesting part that you don't see much is that she swapped into the last Gengar early, meaning that this is perhaps the only time I've ever seen Arbok be her last Pokemon, but overall this one's not too bad. I get past it on my first attempt, and it's got me feeling a little confident about this run. We're three, three up, three down, just like that, after that initial Lorelei failure. Next up is Lance, and I'll talk about some decisions I had to make, but for now, just know that I try out Reflect by replacing Mimic on the very first attempt. And this fight isn't too bad. With Reflect, there's pretty much zero threat of me dying here at all. But the only issue is that without Mimic, you have to let some of his Pokemon like Aerodactyl go first, and it does take a few extra hits here and there, but there's not much risk with this one overall. Because spoiler alert, ahead is the champion fight, and it's very rough, and I swap my movesets up a lot looking for the right combinations, so I'll try to remember to put in a clip of what I changed for those attempts, but we're not going to be showing Lance anymore, because regardless of the combination of moves, it's still easy to get past him. But let's focus on the first champion attempt and specifically what goes wrong. We have Reflect, it helps a lot for physical damage, which encompasses pretty much all of his Pokemon outside of the Alakazam and Charizard, but I do take a lot of chip damage, and between the Pidgeot and the Alakazam, I'm low enough to the point to where Executor can just take me out with stomps. I guess if you're being positive about it, at least it doesn't kill us with Barrage, I guess. That'd be kind of humiliating after I've talked so much shit about it. And for the next attempt, I'm just giving the old Mimic Reflect combo a shot, which means that I sacrifice Solar Beam. And this the next attempt, We'll see why that's a huge mistake. Reflect does half physical damage, and along with being able to mimic recover from the Alakazam sounds great on paper, but in reality, you just don't have enough PP for Psychic to go around for a full 6 Pokemon battle. The real hold up here is Executor. It resists Psychic, it takes a ton of them to go down, and by the time I make it to Gyarados, I'm completely out of damaging PP, and that means I have to do a very painful reset and start all the way over from the very start and go back to the drawing board with my moves. Eventually, I decide to go with my default moveset of Mimic, Sleep Powder, Psychic, and Solar Beam. Reflect is a very nice utility move, but every other move is so crucial and needed here. I try several more times, and the battles are all solid, and I make it to the Charizard each time. Fire Spin and or Fire Blast combined with it outspeeding me means that I lose every single battle here, and at this point I'm debating on if I need to just keep going to the Elite Four and getting higher and higher level, but I press on, and that takes us to our last 
last attempt. First up is the Pidgeot, and I stick to the same strategy here. Sleep Powder and the two Psychics take it out without too much trouble. A Sky Attack sneaking through would probably be the worst case scenario, but I do avoid it on every single one of my attempts. Next up is Alkazam, and it has the potential to crit and do a lot of damage and just be generally annoying, but Mimicking Recover is key here. With that in mind, you can ensure you never lose any health for the rest of the fight, and you just put it to sleep, and you utilize two Solar Beams, and you can get past this one. Rhydon is up next, and it's double weak to Solar Beam, so obviously I use Psychic to soften it up first, and then I use Solar Beam for some reason, but we get past. Executor is up next, and this is one of the more annoying parts of the fight. You can put it to sleep, but you need to use Solar Beams here so you can preserve some of your Psychic Power Points. Using Mimic for Recover earlier is clutch here, as it allows you to soak up all the damage from the stomps, and you'll still be able to heal up to full health. Eventually, some sleep, recovering, and enough Solar Beams will eventually take you past this one. Next to last is Gyarados, and this one's very similar to Pidgeot. I outspeed it, I put it to sleep, and I use two solar beams to take it out without taking any damage in return, and this takes us on at full health into the best position that we could possibly hope for in our current state. Fire Blast is a lot like Barrage in many ways, except that it has lower accuracy, clocking in at 70%. It's definitely a better move in the fact that it operates like Wrap, allowing you not to be able to move, but it's fitting that this run ends by Charizard missing, getting put to sleep, and getting nuked down by psychics to move us on, and that's the run. So how did Execute do? Well, you watched the video, you know that it's not great, but why don't we finally reveal the times, and we'll see if my excessive complaining is justified. Execute finishes the run with a decent level of 66, but it finishes with an awful time of 7 hours and 49 minutes. That's pretty bad, and I've touched on why, but let's just do a little recap if you're just now tuning in for some reason this late in the video. Being in the slow leveling group, coupled with having to rely on the unreliable 60% accurate hypnosis, and only having the very bad barrage as your only damaging move for over half the game is among one of the worst experiences I've had in gaming, period. I'm not talking about just solo runs, I'm talking about gaming, period, anytime I've ever sat down to play a game. While I don't know if this run as a whole was as bad as Eevee overall, it did have a lot more frustrating points because at least Eevee had one huge red flag area that took a while, but the rest of the run really wasn't that bad. So where do we actually rate these little bundle of eggs? I think at this point I have no choice but to put it next to last. It wasn't Cubone levels of Elite 4 level up all the way type of struggle, but it was worse than the low points of both the Growlithe and the Eevee tier. Executes a very weird Pokemon. It finished the entire game at level 66, which is actually really good and rivals the likes of the top three of the four Pokemon on my list. And usually I value that a lot higher in my personal ratings, but I just simply cannot ignore an almost eight hour time and I will never forget how long it took to barrage and hypnosis everything down. I used Egg Bomb for a bit for crying out loud. It was pretty brutal. This run wasn't great. It's crazy how different a run like this could have been if, for example, if Execute got confusion to start the game like it can in Generation 2, but even Cubone could have a decent run if it started with its Generation 2 moveset, but I digress. Anyways, this one's in the books, this is the new tier list, and I think we are close to reaching that point to where there probably aren't many great Pokemon left, and the majority of them are just going to be pretty awful. I haven't crunched the numbers yet, but the only Pokemon off the top of my head that would be the worst would be Weedle, and I don't know if I'm ever going to put myself through a run like that with the amount of views that I get. But overall, I think that's it for me, guys. I don't know what I'm going to be doing next week, but as usual, if you made it this far, then just know that I appreciate you. It's holiday season. I hope all you guys are doing well, and I'm going to be seeing you guys on the next video. Bye!